Okay, so for cell division and mitosis, um, we're really looking at how do cells know when to divide and replicate and then when to stop replicating, right? And like, what's the point of cell division and what has to happen? And those are the questions we're going to try and answer as we go through this uh, video. So we start with the cell and that cell has to divide into two cells. So when we think about like all the stuff that has to happen to get one cell into two identical daughter cells, we need to copy organelles, we need to increase the cytoplasm, we need to make sure our DNA is copied and then divided in half. There's so much that has to happen in order for cells to divide properly into two daughter cells. Um, and this is going to rely on lots of um, both internal and external signals and communication on the cell's part. So we're going to start here with one parent cell. And when we look at this parent cell, we see here that it has three chromosomes. So this is for simplicity. In humans, we would have 46 of these chromosomes. Now remember that we have linear chromosomes, uh, whereas prokaryotes have circular chromosomes, or one circular chromosome. So I'm just going to put this parent cell up here at the top to refresh our memory and have like a reference to remember what the original cell looked like. So in order to get this cell here into two daughter cells that are identical, uh, one thing that has to happen is we have to copy the DNA. So this is where when we learned about DNA replication with the enzymes DNA polymerase 3, ligase, primase, Okazaki fragments, leading strands, lagging strands, when we learned about how DNA replicates, this right here is the why. So when we talk about um, separating our two strands of DNA, and then one being built continuously in the leading, one is the lagging, these are our two strands that now are here. So here we have our identical copies of our DNA. And so this right here has two strands of DNA hooked together. And then eventually, though, we're going to divide those copies um, during M phase of the cell cycle. And we're going to get two daughter cells. And when you look at these daughter cells here and here, you can see that they are identical to that parent cell that we started with. All right. So in order to divide, you need to make more DNA first so that each daughter cell has an identical copy of that. Now these, um, sorry, when we talk about cell division here and we're talking about two daughter cells that are identical, this is going to be how the cells in our body are made. Um, these are all body cells except for your gametes, except for your sperm and your egg. So we call these body cells somatic. Sorry, let's see how I do. So these are going to be um, somatic cells which are our body cells. And somatic cells are made by the process of mitosis. Um, and this requires an awesome cytoskeleton all working together to make this happen. So uh, cell division, what we're making is box one. Okay, so before we can learn the steps of cell division, there's a critically important part, and that's understanding more about our chromosomes. Now, if you remember from our unit on eukaryotic gene regulation, uh, we learned that our DNA is wrapped around histone proteins. So uh, here, this is kind of a pretty picture. You can see the DNA is red and the histone proteins are green. And if we think about how the heck we can actually get six feet or two meters of DNA to fit into every single nucleus in our body, um, it's simply because we wrap it around these histone proteins to make it very highly condensed. Okay, so when we look at our chromosomes, now we usually see it as like an X shape, but in reality, here is one linear chromosome. And before we can divide it, we're actually going to um, make a, oh, here you can see how it's highly coiled, but we're going to make an actual copy of it. So this right here is one sister chromosome, or I'm sorry, this is one chromosome. Um, and so you can see here, I like this picture because it is showing, uh, like right here you can see how it's showing the, um, like the messiness of DNA, how it's like really crammed together. So here I have a picture of one unduplicated chromosome. This is like your cell just living its life. You actually have 46 of these, one, you know, 
linear chromosome. Uh, and then right before a cell is going to divide, it's going to have to make a copy of that DNA. So when we see this X shape, what we're seeing here is a, um, wait, Rocco, is going to be your, uh, this is only going to show up right before a cell divides. So here I have my kids um, to help me elaborate this. Uh, so here in the middle of the duplicated chromosome, it's held together by a centromere. And then here we have sister chromatids. So here is Rocco and Max. Come here, guys. So here, um, Max is going to go first. Go ahead and, and teach them, Max. So you okay. start out with? This is one chromosome. During the S phase, it duplicates, but it's still... What does du so a duplicate, it means it's going to make an identical copy, right? Yeah, it makes an identical copy. Show them. It makes an identical copy, um, but it's still one chromosome. This is only one chromosome. That's super important. What's holding it together is called a centromere. A centromere, uh-huh. So right here, and where Max's fingers are. So this center part here, where they're two um, hooked together, that is going to be called a centromere. They, okay. event they eventually separate. But what are they called when they're hooked together? Um, sister chromatids. Okay, are the sister chromatids different or are they the same? They're the same. Exact copies? Yeah. Okay. So then what happens when they separate? Um, they eventually separate and... Don't, don't read that. Just focus on what you're saying. Think about this. They eventually separate and they still, they're still the exact copies. Are they still called sister chromatids when they're separated? No, but, and they're each different chromosome now. So they're their own unique chromosomes? Yeah. But they're exact copies? Yeah. Okay, cool, thanks. Rocco? So I just want to emphasize, make it a little bit more clear. So when you have, you start out with a chromosome, um, it's going to actually make an identical copy. And right here where my fingers are holding it together is called the centromere. And so this is one chromosome, but it's a duplicated chromosome. And then it's going to separate, going to separate when it's in cell division. And now these are going to be their own individual chromosomes. We now have two chromosomes here, even though they're exact copies. And now these will end up in their own daughter cells. Okay, Rock's going to do his part. Um, the chromosome only looks like an X when it's preparing for cell division. Cool, thanks. So I want to emphasize it's only that X shape you think about when it's actually preparing for cell division. Okay, so now when we look at this, so here you have an unduplicated chromosome, and now it's going to duplicate during S phase. It's going to go through DNA replication and make copies of itself. And now you can see you have two sister chromatids. These are identical copies held together by a centromere. And then when they eventually get separated, we now have two daughter chromosomes, but they're identical copies of each other. So I like this picture here because it simply just shows the DNA molecules. You can see how, um, like, the DNA is duplicating. And I like this because that's uh, where it's like kind of like pinched in. That represents the centromere. Um, so, sorry, that's... Uh, when we look at this, I would like you to compare and contrast a duplicated and unduplicated chromosomes, and then uh, write that in your box, too. So now when we look at the cell cycle, the cell cycle um, is made of, well, in reality, you can break it down into a couple different parts, but we're going to focus on, so you have this, if you think about like a pie, this area is called the M phase, and then all of the rest that everything else is called interphase. So you can see here is interphase. Now interphase, um, so here's M. Interphase are, are these three made of G1, S, and G2. Now in um, G1, this is where the cell is living its life, uh, growing, making proteins, etc. Now a cell can exist in G1 for a while, and if it's a cell that isn't going to divide like a muscle cell or a brain cell, well then it like exits the cell cycle and it enters into an area or a, a phase called G0, which basically means it's not ever going to divide. Now some cells can enter into G0 and then get called back, 
which means like your liver cells generally don't divide. Um, however, if there's damage to your liver, it can pull cells out of G naught and enter them back into the cell cycle. So right here, there's like a division between G1, which is like growth phase one or gap one, and then you have S phase. So there's like a checkpoint. And if a cell actually goes past that G1 check, oh, it's a happy face. If it actually passes that G1 checkpoint, it's going to divide because S phase literally stands for synthesis, making more chromosomes. And that's where this part comes into play. So when it makes, so you start out with a chromosome, when it makes a copy, it literally is making a duplicate. Oops, mutation. Um, and so with this, in S phase, the number of chromosomes in like humans would still technically be 48. There's still 48, oh my gosh, 46. What the heck? 46 chromosomes. However, you have twice as much DNA. So while there's, this is still one chromosome, there's twice as much DNA because it's replicated. Then when it goes into G2, it's still like this. And then it goes into M phase. And when the cell's dividing, that's where ooh, they're going to get separated. Okay, and pulled apart to opposite ends of the cell. This is just a colorful one. I really like this because it showed you duplicated and unduplicated chromosomes. All right, so in our... Um, G1, we have the cell carry out, carries out its function and in some cases grows. In S phase, the DNA is going to replicate. The chromosomes are going to duplicate. And then we have G2, where the cell is going to grow and prepare for mitosis and cytokinesis. And then we have M phase. So let's go ahead and uh, summarize the different parts of the cell cycle in your box number three. And then we have M phase. Now, M phase is made up of two um, parts, mitosis and cytokinesis. So with M phase, uh, it looks like this. You have a cell that's in G1, uh, S or G2. Now during S phase, the DNA is going to duplicate and then it's going to um, condense down into chromosomes. Nope, it's already chromosomes. Uh, condense down into that characteristic X shape that you see. And then the chromosomes move to the middle of the cell. Then they're going to get separated. Then the cytoplasm is going to start to fold in. Um, and so at this point here, when our nucleus has actually divided, that is technically the end of mitosis. So mitosis is just the division of the nucleus. But that next part where we actually divide it into two cells is called cytokinesis. So cytokinesis is the actual division of the, of the cytoplasm. Mitosis and cytokinesis both make up M phase. All right, so that's your box four. So now here we go, a pretty picture. So here we have a cell in interphase in G1, and now the cell's growing. Um, and now it's in S phase, duplicating its DNA. Now in G2, the cell is larger. Um, now we're going to enter into M phase. So in M phase, you have the DNA actually condense down into like visible chromosomes underneath the microscope, but doesn't look like a dark circle anymore. Now you can literally see X-shaped chromosomes in the nucleus. Then the nuclear envelope is going to begin to break down. Oops, sorry. Here we have something called a centrosome. And the centrosome is more like a region of the cell. You have two of them made and they have centrioles. Um, and the centrosome is going to move to the opposite side of the cell eventually. But here what we just saw is that nuclear envelope, that lipid bilayer around the nucleus is going to divide and uh, not divide, is going to break down. Then you have the centrosome is going to move to the opposite side and here's where it sends out uh, spindle fibers which are made out of um, cytoskeleton and they attach to the centromere. And then on the other side, oh, and then they kind of pull it towards their centrosome. Now the other centrosome also spend, sends out spindle fibers. And you get like a tug of war that will eventually result in the chromosomes ending up in the middle of the cell. Because they're both being pulled from each side. And then um, what's going to happen next those spindle fibers are going to pull and separate the sister chromatids. So now I have individual chromosomes, new nuclear envelopes, 
new nucleus or oh, mitosis is done. Cytokin.